Well, we're just driving along here on Interstate 80 in western Nebraska at about mile marker 55. Just before that, all of a sudden I said, oh my gosh, look at this. The landscape just completely changed. Like right before our eyes. Yep, and we're headed to... We're headed to Gehring, Nebraska, which is near Scotts Bluff National Monument. Actually, that's where Scotts Bluff is. And we're going to be staying at a city park there for a week. So we are super excited to enjoy that area and explore more. But wow, I was just shocked how quickly the landscape changed as we were driving. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Going to take you along. Hey, y'all, welcome back. I'm Stacy. I'm Tom, and we're RV Texas, y'all. We are native Texans and full-time RVers who are all about exploring the great state of Texas and beyond one campground at a time. We're on a mission to experience life, not just live it, and we're bringing you along for the fun. In 2018, we sold our house, our business, and got rid of most everything we owned to hit the road and see America. Our home is a 33-foot RV named Freedom. We installed an extreme solar and lithium setup so now we can just about live anywhere with our dog Star and our cat Astro. Every day is a new adventure, so join us as we RV America, y'all. I wanna wander out of the valley where the river takes us far away from home. Time to ponder in the fields around me. Well, there's nothing but the breeze in the gray unknown. Leave your worries and your suitcase. All you don't need, nothing but you. Just a little bit more than an hour's drive from our campsite at Rubidoux RV Park in Garing, Nebraska, we've come to Fort Laramie, Wyoming and the Fort Laramie National Historic Site. This is the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. We hear they do some fun stuff here at the fort to celebrate. Let's go check it out. So behind me is the Fort Laramie Visitor Center. It was originally the commissary storehouse. It was built in 1884. They said that it would have had two major storage areas, one for meat, one for things like rice, beans, and flour, a smaller room for canned goods. Uh, there was a partial basement that had a hand-operated elevator to bring items up and down. So right behind me, this is Old Bedlam. Stacy actually got a stamp for this building in the visitor center. This is the oldest building in Wyoming right here. So pretty cool, built in 1849. It was the, the officer's bachelor quarters back in the day. So uh, really, really cool. And another neat fact about Old Bedlam here is they started restoring this back in the 1930s. And uh, of course, World War II and all that stuff happened. They didn't finish the restoration until the 1960s. So wow, 50 years to restore it, but I think it was worth it. So 
So Fort Laramie was home to four bakeries and that was important because every man, there were about 700 men stationed here and every man got a loaf of bread every day. The bakery behind us in the distance was built in 1884 and served until 1890. The one that there's more to see here was built in 1876 and uh, used until 1884. So, pretty interesting. Ready! Behind me now is the Post Trader store. It was the general store of Fort Laramie. And you could get anything you wanted in here, along with Old Bedlam. This is also the oldest building in Wyoming, dating to 1849. And he said that back in the day, during the high point of the pioneers passing through and the busyness of the fort, you might have a thousand people who would come and trade in a day with 13 clerks working. They not only sold to the soldiers within the fort, they sold to the pioneers who were passing through, traders, and Native Americans who were in the area also came and did business here. Part of the um, counter is original, so like uh, the gentleman said inside, who knows who has leaned on that counter through history. That's, that's pretty amazing. And next to the Post Trader store, you had the post office. Now we know from our adventures so far with the Pony Express that mail was a whole different animal back then and a lot more expensive. But if you wanted to spend that $5 to mail a half ounce letter, I guess this is where you could do it. <laughs> If you look this direction, our rider is going to come in at a gallop. Going to come to a quick stop. And now they're going to exchange the machilla. The next rider is going to ride out as fast yeah. as he can to his next destination. Can we give our riders a round of applause? Woo this is another original here built in 1874. It was the Calvary Barracks. And uh, yeah, still here, still standing in good shape. So this is the most surprising find for me here at Fort Laramie. Behind me are depressions in the ground and these were the ice houses for the fort. When the river behind us froze, they would go down and they would dig up big chunks of ice. They would haul them with wagons up to here. They had underground bunkers basically that they built that they would store the ice in, in big chunks, and the commanding officer would ca carefully ration it out. And they said, if you rationed it out carefully, it kept so well, because there was no ventilation into these underground areas, that they could actually keep ice all the way until September. That's pretty amazing. 
We're on our way out trying to beat the storm, but before we left, we had to see one more stop. This is the magazine, and it was actually built in 1849 also. And of course, the magazine being where they kept all their munitions. Wow, guys, what a great stop this is. This is a brewery, a uh, flyover brewing company, and they also do uh, brick oven pizza, and it was outstanding. And their beer was top shelf. This is one of the best breweries we've ever been to anywhere in the country. We're here in Nebraska. This was started by two ER doctors and man, they spared no expense. This place is flipping awesome. Whenever we're by this area, we will get back. We even bought two six packs to go here. Uh, such good beer, we're gonna take some with us. And the pizza was outstanding too. If we can get back here before we leave, we will. Place is awesome. So about a mile from our campsite in Rubidoux RV Park in Garing, and just before you get to Scotts Bluff National Monument, you get to Legacy of the Plains Museum. We're excited to check this out. We hear it's pretty fantastic. By the way, uh, Scotts Bluff National Monument, that'll be next week's video because that is amazing. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you come back and uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button to see next week's video because it blew our minds. And it's free. Another free thing we did was the Fort Laramie National Historic Site. I'm not sure we mentioned that, but Fort Laramie, even during their 4th of July celebration, was completely free. This is not. This is a paid museum. Let's go check it out. It's pretty neat. You can actually try your hand at sending a telegraph via Morse code. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty fun. This, it represents Dr. Georgia Arbuckle Fix. She actually was a medical doctor who graduated in the first medical school class of the Omaha Medical College in 1883. She was the only woman, there were uh, seven men. She served this area in a 75 mile radius during her tenure as doctor and they said she worked 24 hours a day tirelessly. There was one story where they say that she got a call that there was a man injured she rode on her horse 18 miles to get to him and when she got there they said well there's not really anybody hurt we just heard there was a woman doctor and we had to see it for ourselves <laughs> there's another story they called her the silver dollar doctor because a gentleman had a horrible head injury he was digging a well and part of his brain was exposed she actually repaired his skull using a silver dollar and the man lived to be well into his 80s pretty amazing in the back of the museum they have this big garage that's got a lot of this old farming equipment and trucks and stuff and really cool and this one really sticks out this is a 1942 truck and it's a 1940 grain hauler i guess and they restored this back in 2013, and the guy that restored it back in 2013, after he restored it in 2014, he donated it to the museum. So this is really, really cool. I mean, the, how awesome is that? They hauled grain back in the 40s, I guess, with this truck. So legacy of the Plains Museum here in Garing, Nebraska. What'd you think? Well, I mean, it's really neat. It, it really, it tells you about the history of like the, the farming and everything and how they made it here in the uh, Plains area because it's very dry. Uh, so they had to learn how to grow crops and get water and all that. So, so it's like the whole history from the pioneers on up, I guess. For the most part, there's some pre 
pioneer history, but yeah, really well done. Yeah. A lot of interactive exhibits, um, a lot of older buildings that have been moved inside that include movies and things like that inside them, short little movies. Um, a lot of agricultural information. Um, and yeah, it's uh, also transportation because that's a big thing around here, you know? So yeah, definitely recommend a visit. It was $10. Uh, a person to visit on our on our visit and uh, I thought it was well worth it we spent I don't even know how long we were in there we've been here I think about four hours so yeah we spent a lot of time there's a lot of things to read and look at and yeah I mean just a lot of history here and and uh, and you could kind of they, they take you through on what it's like what it was like to you know try to make a living here or just try to stay alive <laughs> basically you know it really was neat yeah so before we leave this section of nebraska we wanted to come and visit rebecca winters memorial park and this is you know this kind of tells the story of what a lot of these pioneers had to go through as they were making their way across the country in hope for a better life so many years ago by foot but really i mean come on carrying everything that they owned Rebecca Winters was on that journey on the Mormon Pioneer Trail in 1852. Their family left uh, in Iowa in June of 1852. Once they were in this area, she unfortunately contracted cholera and she died in August of 1852. Before her family moved on, their family friend inscribed her name and the date on an iron wagon wheel and left it at her grave to mark the site. The family continued on, her husband and five children and their friends that were with them made it to Utah, went on with their lives. 50 years later, they came back and put in a major marker. However, the most remarkable story in my opinion is that after Rebecca passed and was interred here in Nebraska, the railroad was coming through and the railroad workers, as they were making way for the rail lines, came across the wagon wheel with her name on it, and they actually rerouted the railroad to go around her gravesite. That's pretty amazing. So in my mind, Rebecca Winters kind of captures that pioneer spirit and the harsh life that they had to live and the challenges that they had to face on their journey. So we wanted to come by and pay our respects. Welcome to our campsite here in Garing, Nebraska. This is Rubidoux RV Park. It is a city park operated by the city of Garing. And we had site number 40. Most of the sites here in this park are 30 and 50 amp full hookup. We actually opted for one of the five uh, RV sites that are not full hookup. We have a 30 and 50 amp electric and water site, but we chose it because of the view. That is Scotts Bluff National Monument. And oh my gosh, you have to come back next week because our video next week is going to be all about that amazing place so make sure you're subscribed and make sure you look for that video next week because we cannot wait to share it with you but this has been a really nice base camp to explore the area our site is extremely long they have a lot of pull through sites here that pretty much could fit any size rig uh, they also have some back end sites and at least one pull in site the, the space between the campsites is really, really nice. And we've got a, a picnic table on a concrete pad. Uh, it's been really fantastic. Now, we were here a week. We just have an electric and water site. So we did use their shower house. Really clean, very convenient. Um, not a problem at all. Highly recommend checking out this park when you're in the area rubidoux rv park now this has been a really quiet park during our stay except during fourth of july and the evening surrounding that because we were surrounded by fireworks which 
that was pretty cool. The fireworks for the city actually happened in the amphitheater, which is located right behind the park here. So we had a front row view basically from our campsite. And then the locals set off fireworks also, so we could just sit here and watch them. It was pretty fantastic. Uh, there are a lot of things we didn't get to do while we were here that we will definitely come back for. Even with a week, we just ran out of time. We didn't make it to iconic Chimney Rock, which we definitely have to go see next time. Uh, there's also another national monument about an hour north of here that we didn't make it to. So we definitely look, uh, look forward to coming back in the future. And, oh my gosh, y'all, Oregon Trail Days Festival starts tomorrow here in Garing. They've been setting up for it in the amphitheater. They're setting up a carnival back there. We've watched them the last few days. They're gonna have a big parade and lots of events. We're so sad that we barely missed that. But we are off to Wyoming. So make sure you join us next week to see Scotts Bluff National Monument. Trust me, you do not want to miss that. And we look forward to more adventures in Wyoming. Until then, safe travels and happy camping. Bye.